Hey guys, what's up? Jed here. Welcome to another video. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning how to solve simultaneous equations using the substitution method. Now, these types of simultaneous equations are the more difficult ones because you have one nonlinear equation and one linear equation. Now, in order to learn this topic, you need to know how to solve linear equations and how to solve quadratic equations. So if you don't, I've left the link in the descriptions below for those lessons. So you can check them out if you need to. Also, at any stage of this lesson, if you feel like you're learning or understanding this topic and you want to support the channel, leaving a like and subscribing will really help out. Thank you. Okay, let's begin. So in our first example, question one, we are being asked to solve the following simultaneous equations. We have a nonlinear equation and a linear equation. Your first step is to rearrange for y or x in the linear equation. It's your choice to rearrange for y or x. However, sometimes it's beneficial to rearrange for one rather than the other. Let's take a look at this example here. If I choose to rearrange for y, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3, I'm going to get y is equal to x plus 5 over 3. And if I choose to rearrange for x, I'm going to get 3y minus 5 is equal to x, because of course we subtract 5 from both sides to isolate the x. And if you just take a look at both of them now, rearranging for y gave me an expression that is a fraction. However, rearranging for x just gave me an expression. I'd much prefer to work with this expression here than with the fraction. Although if you do choose to work with a fraction, you will still get the same answer in the end. However, with time and practice, you can rearrange for y or x intuitively in your head and make a decision from there. So now that I know I'd rather rearrange for x, that's going to be the first step. So I'm just going to rule off and I'm going to proceed with my first step. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides and this is going to leave me with 3y minus 5 is equal to x. Step 1 done. Your second step is to then take the nonlinear equation and rewrite it with x replaced by 3y minus 5. And that looks like this. So my first term is x squared. And like I said, I'm not going to write x. I'm going to write 3y minus 5 instead because it is equal to x and therefore we can substitute it into x. And that looks like this. 3y minus 5 squared because of course we have x squared here. And then I'm going to add y squared to that. And this is going to equal 5. Okay, that's the second step. Your third step is then to expand this and simplify. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have 3y minus 5 multiplied by 3y minus 5 plus y squared, which is equal to 5. Expanding this is going to give me 9y squared minus 15y minus 15y plus 25. And then I have my plus y squared here as well. And this is going to equal 5. Simplifying this expression now gives me 10y squared, because of course 9y squared plus y squared gives us 10y squared. And then minus 15y minus 15y gives us minus 30y. And then we have plus 25, which is equal to 5. I'm then going to make this equation equal 0, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Minus 5 there and minus 5 there. And that's how I like to show my working out. And now this is going to give us 10y squared minus 30y plus 20, which is equal to 0. And the reason I'm getting my equation equal to 0 is so that I can solve this quadratic equation with one of the three methods that we've learned in the previous lessons. Which brings us to our fourth step, which is to solve this quadratic equation. Okay, now to solve this quadratic equation, I can see that there is a common factor of 10 in all three terms. So I'm going to divide the entire equation by 10 on both sides. And this is going to give me the following. Divided by 10, divided by 10, which gives us y squared minus 3y plus 2 which is equal to zero. And just very quickly, I'm going to see if there are two numbers that can multiply to give me two and add to give me negative three. And there is indeed, it's going to be negative two and negative one. So I'm going to solve this by factorizing. I know a quadratic trinomial factorizes into two brackets. We're going to have y minus two and y minus one. 
and this is going to equal zero. And just quickly checking this in my head, y times y is y squared, y times negative one is negative y, negative two times y is negative two y. So the negative y and the negative two y give us negative three y, that works. And negative two times negative one gives us positive two. So this is definitely the factorization for this quadratic trinomial. I then solve this by taking each factor and equaling it to zero. Y minus two is equal to zero and Y minus one is equal to zero. Rearranging for Y in both equations, we get Y is equal to two and Y is equal to one. And that's the fourth step done. We found our values for Y. Now for the fifth and final step, we're going to find our values for X. And how you do this is by taking one of the original equations, the nonlinear or the linear, I always prefer to work with the linear as it's easier to deal with. And we're going to take the rearranged form for this. As you can see, we already have a way to find x. x is equal to 3 lots of y minus 5. So I'm going to take this equation here, which is my rearranged version of the linear equation, 3y minus 5 equals x. And I'm just going to write it here. 3y minus 5 is equal to x. And then I'm going to take the values I found for y and substitute them into this equation. So we're going to have for y equals 2, 3 multiplied by 2, and this is how I like to write my multiplication with brackets, minus 5 is equal to x. So we've taken the value we found for y and substituted it into this original equation. And we get 6 minus 5, which is equal to x. And simplifying further, we get 1, which is equal to x. So our first set of solutions are going to be when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. And now to find our second set of solutions, I'm going to take this original rearranged linear equation again, 3y minus 5, which is equal to x. And I'm going to substitute the other y value, which is y is equal to 1. So we're going to have 3 multiplied by 1 minus 5, which is equal to x. Simplifying this gives us 3 minus 5, which is equal to x. And simplifying further, we're going to get negative 2 is equal to x. So our second set of solutions, when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 1. And there you have it, guys. This is how you solve simultaneous equations where one of the equations is linear and the other equation is nonlinear. If you have any questions, guys, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate all the support and we hope to see you in our next lesson. Take care.